In the great scheme of our system of consciousness that the Supreme Creator breathed out and set forth, planet Earth is the most unusual and wonderful place. What makes it so unique is that it is the one place in our particular galaxy that man can unfold himself into a complete being as referred to as the Son of God. It's a pretty big job. It's not easy. Because when we decided to go to school and leave the Father's house, we left the all-knowing permanency of consciousness and we drop down into what is known as birth and death. This is like going to school. Every time we come into life, we live a life and we either graduate, we are capable of learning what we came to do, or we, we don't. Of course, I know some people don't believe in reincarnation, but that doesn't change the fact that it's true. You'll find out someday. And when you do, your eyes will open and say, well, I'll be doggone now. Everything starts making sense. Why some people are born dumb, why some are born bright, why some are rich, why some are poor, why some have bad bodies. It begins to make sense when you study it from that point of view. You're not going to reincarnate back into an animal, so forget that. We're going to move on into higher school opportunities. And it all takes place right here on planet Earth. There are seven dimensional states of consciousness going on right now. And they're all going on right now. We happen to be in a three-dimensional state with a fourth-dimensional whole. And when you learn how to move your consciousness, you're going to be so amazed that it is going on right here. But in order to go to the fourth-level school, you have to put on the fourth-level body. We have a three-dimensional body. And you can learn right now how to put on this fourth-dimensional body and make that one step and when you do, everything is in the fourth dimensional, held together by a fifth dimensional. And it's quite amazing once you find that you can do these things, because now it takes away all the mystery and the fear and the anxiety. But we have dropped into desire and feelings. The male body is full of mental desires, and the female body is full of emotional feelings. And what we need to do is learn how to balance it. And as soon as you balance it, you become a free person. But as long as you stay in these extremes, you're not free. The thrill that we find coming to planet Earth puts us into the school and it binds us by our personal designs. What are our desires? Sex, fame, power, passion? Or do you want to know the truth about yourself? To know the truth about yourself is going to take a lot of courage because you're going to have to be different. And the best way to be different is to keep your mouth shut. It really is. It really is. But when we dropped out of the world of permanency, out of the great pattern, the perfect pattern, to put consciousness back into that perfect pattern, it's just like if you went out here and got you a blueprint of your most wonderful dream house. Now you have a blueprint, but you don't have any home. But you have the blueprint of everything that needs to be done. So you go to work, and you begin to work, and you get people to help you, and you build this beautiful dream. It's the same way. We have what is called the oversoul. It's a pattern. It may, it's made in the image and likeness of the great supreme creator but it does not have performing consciousness in it until you go to school and learn how to perform properly and when we come and go to school we take and put performance into that pattern and when you have developed that pattern to its completeness you don't go back to school now you graduate you go to higher more Wonderful places. And Jesus said, In my Father's house are many mansions. Mansions means states of consciousness where we can perform. And wonderful, wonderful. But you have to have a body with consciousness to move into these different levels. And going to school on planet Earth, 
the thing that happens to us, we drop into ignorance because we do not understand 1,000 laws and the 144 elements that put this thing together. You have 1,000 facets in your mental body. Now, if your mental body is like a perfect, beautiful diamond, shining clean and clear with no flaws, you have command. But if you have any kind of shadows in any of those 1,000 facets of the mental body, then you have to go to school and work it out. Because when the three and a half fell in the four, and it's in the Bible, it tells all about it, we were put on free will. That means that you can use these laws of mind to fulfill the purpose that you were created for, or you can destroy yourself. And you can see people destroying themselves with dope and alcohol and in skid row type things. You can see them just going to nothing. And there is a being known as the accumulator controller. And if you drop far enough in consciousness, this wonderful being who is sort of cleans up things will pull you back into itself, world, dissolve everything that you have ever done, and then put that seed back into the hands of the great supreme server and it will breathe it out again into the field to go back to school and it has lost its soul but that which it was was not lost it's put back goes back to school start over again <coughs> now these things are not normally told but if you come here you come here for one purpose to find the truth about yourself and not to take my word for it but to do the things that will unfold that state of consciousness so that you experience it yourself. Another man's word is little value if he can't show you how to do these things for yourself. If you were birthed and somebody says, well, this is the way you eat, so you never get a chance to eat, you're not going to live long, are you? You're not going to become a son of God, a bright shining light, a freeman in the whole estate, unless you learn how to perform and go to school and learn how to use these 1,000 laws, these facets of your mental body. It is said that we should live and work very, very hard to develop the mind that was in the mind known as Jesus the living Christ. And when we start to unfold the living Christ mind within ourselves, which is a pure, clean, wonderful state of loving and gentle kindness, then we begin to develop what is known as the pure in heart. And when that heart is pure, you will know God. Now, it doesn't have to be absolutely so pure that you can't stand the human race, but you can get it pure enough that you can really know this thing called God. You really can. And I kid you not, no one will be denied. But you do have to do what is necessary to do. Otherwise, you live in what is called the emotional appeal. The average human is sense-bound. He is a slave to the nature of his animal. And he develops habits to make this animal a more pleasable thing to have what is called sensuousness. And God is a mystery. If someone says to you, What's God? What's going to be your answer? What is God? God is that life force that's inside of you. It's inside of me. It's in everything. And just as you can learn to know this body, you can learn to know this part of yourself. Because God is within all of us. And there's a beautiful stream, a magnificent highway. Jesus called it the straight and narrow path. And when you learn how to find that beautiful path and through the Christ consciousness, through what Jesus taught and gave to the world, you begin to surrender to this Christ. And the Christ cleans you up. Everything is cleaned up. What a magnificent thing it is. Not a mental hope, wish, or somebody doing it for you. You step into this beautiful state that Jesus gives to the world and came to teach and show us what to do. He says, bear thy cross. What is your cross? It's when you have your arms out like that and you're holding on to all kinds of attachments. Let go of the attachments and let God flow through you and you'll know. 
you really know. But this nut up here keeps on going over and over and over the attachments of desire and the screaming of feelings. But as soon as we, you and I, bring the male and female aspect together into a oneness, you'll find God. You'll know what it is. And then you'll begin to want to live in that state of consciousness. And that state of consciousness is unconditional love. You'll find that your family gets better, your life gets better. Everything begins to turn to help you. And because you are wanting to give love, everybody wants to return love. Even those that don't like you, for some reason, will gradually say, I think maybe you're not a bad person after all. But until you step into the Christ life, really step into it. Not just imagine it. Not just wonder about it. Not get on your knees and pray. Sometimes that helps. But the main thing is consciously. You and I are a conscious being. And we are conscious of what life is unfolding to us here on planet Earth. And it may be all tied up in physical body desires. And until you learn to go into the closet and be still, the mind, and shut down the attachments and the fears and the worries, shut them down and become still, then you, then you will know God. Honest, you will know God. And nobody can do it. I don't care who you are or what you've done. But you have to do it. I can't do it for you. Because God is a mystery to most everyone, we worship with our lips, not with our heart. Do you think about it? We give lots of words to our beloved Lord Jesus, and we give lots of words to God. How much time do you give to it? How many of you here at least sit down once a day and pray? Our meditation is our prayer. We say a few words, we go inside, we ask to become one with the Divine Father. And what is our main prayer? To learn how to serve God. And do you know that when you serve each other in a kind, gentle, loving, unconditional way, you're serving God. If you serve in a mean, selfish, greedy, call people names, you're serving Satan. It's just that simple. But who wants to believe that simplicity? But that's the way it is. Whether you like it or not, that's the way it is. And if you'll practice it, you'll find that that's the way it is. We always make promises. We just never keep them. We make all these New Year's resolutions. And before the end of the day, we're breaking them. We've got to realize one of these days that it is our thinking that either makes us a happy, wonderful person or a miserable person. So each act and each thought begins with you. Because every thought you think goes right through here, goes down into the nervous system, goes through our body, and ties us up. So I want to clean it up. I ask Father to help me clean this up. I want my books to balance. I want to be clean and clear to serve. There are a few very sincere and honest individuals on the planet. They have dedicated themselves to share the knowledge that God has given them the blessedness to experience. Now you have to realize that that can be done on seven different levels. And when you understand yourself, and you understand these force fields called seals in the Bible, revelations, these are the apples in the Garden of Eden. And what apple are you choosing to eat from and live by? Some people want nothing but sex. And that's where they live. You can find them. Some people want to do nothing but fight the life power center, argue, scream, yell, hurt. Some people just want emotional life. Some people want just an intellect life. Some want the power to control others. But some want to hear the last trumpet and the walls of Jericho come tumbling down. And when it does, Christ is birthed into your life. You're born again into this beautiful thing. Wonderful. 
Just magnificent. But until you can do it, you have to live down here in one of these levels. But as soon as the trump, last trumpet is sound, you go through and become one with this thing called God. But if you don't understand how you're put together, then you're going to be tied up and twisted. And you're going to function to please what I like to call the doer, which is a personality. And we forget about the triune aspect. This part here is the worker. And it tells us in the Bible that you're going to work and earn by the sweat of your brow. And this thing has to work. And it's the most wonderful thing that God has given us. The power to do things. But when we reach here, we're entering into the Christ, the pure state of mind, the thinker. You say, oh, well, I think, do you? Do you really think? Or, or have you just accumulated a lot of knowledge that lets you manipulate patterns that you have put into your brain system? Very, very few people think. Very few. And this is the knower, the God. The knower, the thinker, the doer, the triune aspect. They have to all come together. Do you know when you are a thinker? I'll tell you. It's when you can think between your breath. When you take a breath in, there's a moment right in here that's full of this Christ light. And you know how you can find it? By just looking in a person's head and if that's light there, you know that they have thinking capacity. If there's no light in there, you know that they're a manipulator. And so we practice here at the center, learning how to think for ourselves. We learn how to think in the Christ light, the Christ mind. And the Christ mind never wants to hurt anybody, never wants to judge anybody, never wants to put anybody down. It only wants to become one with the Father. And so we learn how to think. Right in there. I and my father are what? And we do it over and over and over until that space gets larger and larger and larger until we're full of light. And when that I, that mind, is full of light, you become a thinking person. Otherwise, you're manipulating knowledge that you have programmed through the brain the convolutions of the brain, the wrinkles, which are the habits that you have put there. It's not easy to do because we have to change a lot of our ways of acting and thinking. But it can be done. The doer in the body is always involved with sensuousness. What am I going to get to eat for lunch now? Let's see. Mexican food? No, it makes me burp too much. On and on and on, you begin to think about what you want to do. When the seed unit has passed its unintelligent nature course and starts its course of righteousness, which is the right useness of these laws of mind, then we begin to wake up to the stream. But as long as we are emotionally Involved with patterns that somebody else has told us how it is, you won't wake up. You have to think for yourself. You have to be your own being. You have to use your own mind. Let no one else do that. You have to learn how to do it. Sure, you're going to make mistakes, but that's the way you learn. You learn by the mistakes. All three must come together in a perfect balance. Having learned to maintain and manage the Adam perfect body. Last man, Adam, a quickening spirit. This is your Adam body. And when this man here can put that body on, he no longer has to come back to this school. He, he goes on. Goes into the higher realms. To reach immortality is to live in the realm of permanency. And you can do it right now. You don't stay there continually, but you can go. And you can become full conscious aware of that beautiful realm of light where you live eternally.
eternal. And you live consciously, not unconsciously, but full conscious. It has been my wonderful privilege to see some of my disciples leave this physical world and go through all this ugly stuff, go right straight through into this light. And what a joy it was for me to see that they didn't have to stay down in this hell world. That they stepped into this straight and narrow path, went to this Christ consciousness. The beloved Lord touched them and they went right straight on through. You think Master Jesus is not still functioning? You get here and I'll guarantee you, you'll see him and he'll talk to you and he'll help you. And he will be there for a long time. Didn't he say, I go to prepare a place for you? He's there. And when I get down or I get can't figure out something, I go there and say, Beloved Lord, help me. I need, I need answers because I want to become like you. Like you. I want, to do, I want to have the rights that you have. You said that I could do these things in greater, so help me. Teach me. I want it personally. I don't want it through somebody else. And honest, I can show you how to do it. I really can. Because anything I can do, you can do. But you have to know how to do it. I sincerely hope that you who go to school at our Lotus Center School, that before you finish the school, you will become a real good Christian. That's the whole basis of our, of our teaching, is to become a Christian. Not to say, I'm a Christian, but be a living Christian who follows the teachings of the beloved Jesus. And where do you start? Right at home. And where you work. It's not easy to be a good Christian. It's real easy to be a mouthing Christian. I'm a good Christian, but you know old Bill over here, old Smith? Boy, I'm telling you, he's the worst kind of Christian I ever saw. That's not Christianity. That's churchianity. A good Christian does not find fault with his brother and his sister. He loves one another. He cares for one another. He tries to help. Whenever he can, he tries to help. We must learn to listen to this thing called the voice of consciousness. And you got one. And you know, it will always tell you what not to do. It don't tell you what to do, but it will sure tell you what not to do if you listen. Hell and heaven are but states of mind. And all you have to know that is true is to be able to watch a person die. That's all you have to know. And when this eye opens up, deep in the head, the all-knowing eye, this beautiful eye of God, and you can sit and you can sit beside a person and watch them leave the body and go into these different states of mind, you'll know that that's true. You'll never know that it's true until you watch it. And I have seen many. So I don't talk about something that I read in the book or somebody else said or somebody's been preaching all their life. I'm talking about personal experiences that I have experienced and that everyone can experience if they'll do the things that are required to open up the facets of mind. And the one that's the most beautiful to me is Christ's mind. Then you can see. And I want my disciples, my students, not to stop down here in this miserable world of hell, but to go up and meet the Lord Jesus and go on through into the last man, Adam, this beautiful light of a thousand suns that does not hurt. It's a body of light. It scared me the first time I entered, I will admit it. It really was frightening. It was so bright. But no longer. If the world persists, and judging and killing each other, then, my friends, planet Earth is going to take us a roll. She's going to turn over. It really is. It's turned over before when things got too ugly. And it will turn over again. And I say to you, be ready. Be ready if it turns over. So that you don't get caught in this hellacious state of mind. It's miserable. I didn't make the laws. I didn't set it up. I just know about it. You can go into a heaven world if you're really kind, gentle, and beautiful. 
But I prefer to go on into a free world, into freedom of consciousness. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and it shall f- you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Matthew 7, 7. Do you realize that you have to ask to know God? You can't just wander around and say, well, he must be someplace. I guess he'll find me when I'm ready. No. Father, I want to become one with you. Please help me. Guide my life so that I can know thee personally. Not through somebody else. Or not through words of a book. But a personal unfolding of my consciousness. Ask and you shall receive. Knock is to ask. To live. So we have to begin by controlling our thinking. We have to define what we expect. Do you expect to know God? I did. There was a time when I didn't. When I was an atheist, I didn't, because I said there wasn't any God. But I did expect to know God when I was a Baptist, and when I was a Presbyterian, when I was first Christian, and when I was dumped and everything else. But I never did know him. Oh, listen, I've been on my knees since I was about 16 years old. A man came along and says, you are sure positive about just wanting to know God. I said, well, I'm about to give it up. <laughs> he said, well, you know, you're looking in the wrong place, son. Let me show you where to look. I said, all right. I don't believe you, but all right. So he showed me how to do his meditation. I'd open one door, and then I learned another technique and another technique. And soon I learned how to stop the mind from working. And the minute this thing, you know what it sounded like when I first discovered it? It sounded like an old Model T Ford with all the rods loose in it. That's the honest truth. Boy, it rattled. And finally I got it still. And when I got it still, this light came in. And Master Jesus was standing right in front of me. And he put his hand around my head. He says, you want to know the Father? I said, with, with all the life I have, take it if you need it, but I want to know. And the door opened, and I went into that light of a thousand suns. And when I came back, you know what Jesus did? He bowed to me. And there's no human being alive that can't have this experience. And when Ben's daddy died, you know where he went? Right here. He didn't stop along the street. He went right here. And when he went in, God bless you, Ben. Bye-bye. And this happened to many people for me. So I'm not talking about something I wish could be or hope to be or might be. I'm talking about what is. 